Texas has a law that they passed in 2013 that applies to junk science. And 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 if someone was convicted of something that involves junk science, then they have the ability to have their sentence overturned by a court. And and that's why Robert Robertson should be freed. Welcome back to Come and Take It. This week, just a reminder, we are in early voting, so make sure you go vote, make your voices heard, all that fun stuff. Also make your voice heard in uh, leaving us a rating and review if you're listening on uh, Apple, uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast. Audio-wise, if you could just go in, you're already listening, you're already there, all right? Hit five stars because we deserve no less, and then leave us a nice review, and then, of course, Alternatively, if you're watching on YouTube, smash the like button, whatever all the cool kids are saying, and uh, leave us a comment. And um, let me know, actually, let me know if the comments, in the comments, if you've already voted. I'd like to know that. So this week, I want to talk about a uh, Texas house divided. Isn't that always the case? I think the overall theme of uh, this week's podcast is this is why we can't have nice things. This is why I can't have nice things. All right. Now, this in particular, I'm talking about the case of Robert Robertson. Now, you guys may have heard about this, even if you're not living in the state of Texas, because this did make national news lately. So Robert Robertson was on death row after being convicted of murdering his two-year-old daughter, Nikki, back in 2002. Uh, that's yes. pretty dark. Yeah, yeah that's, that's dark. Yeah, that's pretty dark. You know, well, so the day that she died, uh, he brought her into the hospital, like barely alive. And of course, the nurses are like, what happened? And um, he says she fell out of bed. He later changed that story to, well, she hit, she hit a table. And then he went back to, later, he went back to, well, and actually, no, she fell out of bed. And then ultimately, he landed on, I don't really know how she got those injuries. I'm not sure what happened. Okay? A little suspicious. So suspicious, in fact. And the evidence was so overwhelming against him that, of course, he was arrested and charged and a jury of his peers convicted him, and he was scheduled to receive a lethal injection back on October 17th. Now, at that point, you know, once you get to the point where you are set to receive this, you're fresh out of appeals, you've gone through a bunch, you no longer have any more. Uh, you, you know, you appeal to the governor, you request that the governor delay it um, or just not do it. You ask the parole board, hey, will you guys give me an out? Anyone, anyone who had any avenue to delay this or overturn it or whatever, anyone who had any authority to do that, they had already looked at it and said no. So the parole board said no. The governor said no. He was out of conviction. I'm um, sorry. He was out of appeals and everyone refused. And yet, this man is still alive. Why? Well, because a handful of Texas House members took it upon themselves to collaborate with the George Soros-funded Innocence Project to free a child murderer by manipulating the system to delay his sentencing. Here's what I mean by that. This group of legislators in the uh, Texas House Committee on Criminal Jurisprudence, this whole thing is kind of led by, it's a it's a bipartisan group. Don't you love it when they say that? Uh, bipartisan group. For all the wrong reasons, led by uh, Democrat Representative Joe Moody. Um, by the way, this whole thing that's being led by this committee and Joe Moody and these others, none of whom are actually or were involved in this trial when it took place. Okay, so all of these com committee members who voted for this decided since they weren't legally allowed to interfere in this man's execution, they had absolutely no legal recourse. They decided to vote to subpoena Robert Robertson to testify in front of their committee because if he was legally obligated to testify at a later date, they could punt it and the criminal justice system couldn't execute him by law. Oh, a loophole of all the wrong kinds. Now, to be clear, 
under the Texas Constitution, the only person, the only elected official who has the power, who has the authority, I should say, to delay executions is, of course, the governor. They know that, by the way. They, like, they, they know that. They just wanted to get the end result that they wanted. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. No matter the cost, uh, the ends justify the means as they say. And so this group of lawmakers, yet again, decided to abuse their power. They know better, apparently. This is the recurring theme with the Texas House. They know better. They know better than the governor who you guys elected. They know better than the attorney general who you guys elected. They know better than you, the Texas voter, because they apparently think that it should be their place to just overturn the will of the people, overturn the Texas Constitution. They know better here in the Texas House, all right? So what they're alleging is that Robert Robertson's conviction centered around a uh, shaken baby diagnosis. This is, of course, head trauma that occurs in babies and young toddlers whose, like, their, their brains are still forming, their skulls are still forming, and it occurs whenever you shake a baby or a toddler very violently the shaken baby syndrome, okay? And what this committee is sort of proposing is that this guy deserves, uh, you know, a fresh look at his case because it involved some sort of a shaken baby claim. And in the last few years, there are a couple courts who have come out and designated uh, shaken baby syndrome as like a junk science, okay? They say, uh, you know, that um, they used to think a certain way about it, and now they don't. So when he was convicted, back in 2003 was when he was convicted, the American Academy of Pediatrics guidance had said if a young child presented with um, three different symptoms, unexplained bleeding on the brain, bleeding behind the retinas, and brain swelling, that there should be a presumption of child abuse and shaken baby uh, syndrome. Now, since then, some doctors say that um, it's not just non-accidental, you know, violent acts. It could be shortfalls off the bed. It could be some sort of an accidental trauma that could result in these same symptoms. And so you couldn't just predetermine that it was child abuse. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, that seems reasonable. (laughs) As that stands, Texas passed a law in 2013 that allows courts to overturn convictions if the conviction was based on some sort of a junk science. So they say if it was based, if the conviction was based on a, a scientific um, assumption that is no longer the scientific assumption at the time that you're relooking at it, that you a court could overturn any sort of conviction based on that. Now, notice I said it allows courts to overturn convictions, not le- legislators, not committee members in the Texas House. It allows courts and judges to do that, okay? And at this point, I want to be clear. I don't want innocent people on death row. I don't want innocent people incarcerated. I want the judicial system to work correctly. And when it doesn't, I do believe in the ability for people to um, clear their names, right? To take a, a second look at the evidence, to take a third look at something, to make sure that everything uh, that happened was proper. Um, I, I, I do fully believe in the system needing all of those pieces in place in order to serve people um, well. I am a very kind person. Now, has there been an innocent person who has, you know, been on death row, been executed, been, I, I, I don't know, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, I know that there are innocent people who have served time who are later freed, and my heart aches for them. And I understand that you want to make sure that you get it right anytime you use the death penalty, not just here in the state of Texas, but anywhere, because that's a big freaking deal, and you got to make sure that you get it right. However, I want to talk about what happened since this committee got their paws on this case and made, you know, a, a large sector of not just this state, but the entire country feel bad for this guy. 
made all of these people now Robert Robertson supporters, child murderer supporters. Okay, here's what's happened since the committee got involved. They subpoenaed him, as I mentioned. Uh, well, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and the Attorney General's office said, yeah, we're not taking a violent criminal to the Capitol to come testify in a hearing. That's not a good idea. Tell you what, you can do it through Zoom. Okay, you can have an electronic hearing. He can sit in his little computer uh, inside his, you know, facility. High security. And you guys can ask him whatever questions you want to ask him, but we're not like we're not bringing him to the Capitol. That's that's not happening. Well, that wasn't good enough, apparently, for Robert Robertson's attorneys. Now, entitled much? I'd say so. They said, no, 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 we don't accept Zoom. We don't accept that because you know what? Robert Robertson has autism. Yeah, that precludes him from using this technology. How? I don't know. I don't know. It's not clear. He won't come across well enough on the computer. It has to be face-to-face. -face. All of this weaponizing the system and manipulating the system must be done our way or else we're not going to show up. Um, your client is alive because these people manipulated the system. The least you could do is just, I don't know, like uh, play by what they're asking over at TDCJ and the AG's office. But so instead of Robert Robertson testifying, which of course, remember, was the whole point of this whole big production. They they wanted to pump the brakes so that he could, you know, have a little bit of a, a, a stay um, while they worked this out, figured out how they were going to get him out of this mess and they needed to subpoena him. Well, he didn't even show up. And instead of him showing up, we got this big dog and pony show um, in the Texas house. And they had John Grisham, the author, yes, the author. What he had to do with this particular case, couldn't tell you. Um, but I do know that he, of course, his background is in, um, you know, uh, trial law. Again, this case in particular, no. Dr. Phil McGraw. It's a guy from TV. The talk show host, Dr. Phil, also testified. Um, also didn't have anything personal to do with this case. Also, should be noted, not a medical doctor. Okay? So they had all these, they're like, oh, we're going to call in the big names who may not really know much about this case, but they have plenty of opinions they'd like to share. However misguided they are, let's bring them in to muddy the waters. And that's what they did. So this whole big production happened down in Austin and Robertson wasn't even there to testify. But since then, this is the important part, I think that um, Texas and the rest of the country needs to understand. If you're reading the liberal mainstream media headlines, you're going to have a lot of empathy for this man. You're going to think that the case is very clear and that this man should be out of prison right now, that he was wrongfully convicted. That's what all these headlines, that, that's how they all read, okay? But since then, the attorney general's office has had no choice but to release more details about this case. And I'm going to read some of these. And I want to warn you, they're very graphic at certain points, okay? So, there's your, consider that your, uh, your advisory, all right? You tell me, as I'm reading the details of this case, is this just junk science, okay? From the report, I'm gonna read this. In 2002, two-year-old Nikki Curtis was brought to the hospital close to death with, with extensive bruising to her chin, face, ears, eyes, shoulder, and mouth. Emergency room nurse Andrea Sims, who saw Nikki before medical intervention, testified at trial that in addition to the bruising, Nikki had a handprint on her face and that the back of her skull was bruised and, quote, mushy. Robert Robertson, her father, had a history of violently abusing his daughter, and witnesses testified in trial that they were afraid to leave Nikki alone with him because he would repeatedly whip her whenever she cried. Testimony showed that he often would strike Nikki hard with his hands, a board, or a paddle, and on, on at least one instance threw her off the bed. Robert Robertson's own mother said at one time, one of these days he's going to kill her and it's going to be too late for anyone to do anything about it. Junk science? Really? 
Report goes on. According to doctors testifying at the trial, Nikki died from substantial blunt force head injuries that clearly indicated the girl had been struck. The evidence of blunt force trauma precluded the possibility that the child died from being shaken. Nikki was abused by her father and died due to the trauma he inflicted. After hearing this evidence and countless hours of testimony about Robertson's pattern of losing his temper and violently abusing his daughter, a jury of his peers convicted him of murder in 2003, sentencing him to the death penalty for beating his own daughter so viciously that she died. It goes on. And on top of that, um, again, this is going to be very graphic, okay? His cellmate said that he actually admitted to abusing his baby as well. He said that Robertson told him that he put his pee in the baby's mouth and rubbed it against her. The cellmate also said Robertson told him that when Robertson was upset with his female partner, he would take his anger out on Nikki, his daughter. He told the cellmate of hitting Nikki on the back of her head with his hand and then dropping her on her head and leaving her on the floor. Junk science? Oh, it was just a junk science shaken baby diagnosis. That was an accident. This guy was a monster. This is a bad person. Okay? The jury also heard... That Robertson, who had over a dozen prior arrests, had strangled his ex-wife with a coat hanger, punched her in the face, and broke her nose while she was pregnant, uh, and, and beat her with a fireplace shovel. The jury also heard that Robertson was the girl's sole caretaker for the very first time on the day that Nikki's deadly injuries were inflicted, and he was displeased to be obligated to care for the child, according to his girlfriend at the time. Junk science? Does that sound like junk science? Oh my gosh, we have to keep this guy from being lethally injected. We got to save this child murderer's life, man. It's just junk science. It was just junk science that he had a long and sordid history of violence. It's just junk science that his cellmate is corroborating that he's a terrible, dis disgusting human being. It's just junk science that... He had, uh, that Nikki had a handprint on her face. It's just junk science that multiple doctors, the, the coroner, the autopsy report, everything, everything you look at indicated that she died due to violence at the hands of her father. And yet, all these people want to make a name for themselves. They've got some hero complex. Dr. Phil strolling up into the Texas house like, let me tell you how I feel about this case. And? So? Were you involved? Do you know anything about the evidence that was presented? Personally? No? Okay. Be gone. John Grisham, what are you writing a new novel? Trying to get ideas for your new book? Like, what are we doing? Is this some Hollywood theater? Or is this real life? This man killed his baby. It, it, it boggles my mind. We're even having this conversation. We're wasting Taxpayer resources. We're wasting taxpayer money. Keeping this guy alive for longer. Going through all this production. Hosting hearings. Having testimony. Spending all day on it on the house floor. Really? You mean to tell me you guys in the Texas house have nothing better to do than try to delay a child murderer's execution? You can't find any. You can't. You can't get rid of our property taxes like we ask you to. You can't give us meaningful border security. You can't ban the CCP and Russia from owning our land. You can't do a whole lot of things that we, the people, have asked you to do. 
But what you can do, what you do have time for, is simping for some child murderer. Wow. That's embarrassing. That's really embarrassing. This is not junk science. Okay. I know Texas wants to, all these Texas legislators getting their time on like WFAA. Those of you who are not local to Dallas, local news. Okay. Getting their, getting their two minutes of fame on local news. And they're like making the rounds all proud of themselves. Texas has a law that they passed in 2013 that applies to junk science. And, and, and if someone was convicted of something that involves junk science, then they have the ability to have their sentence overturned by a court. And, and that's why Robert Robertson should be freed. That was a lot of words. A lot of words. You guys are so embarrassing. Did you even think to look at the facts of the case before you started parroting this around? News and analysis on what's happening in Texas. End your day with daily headlines from Texas Scorecard. Every day at 5 p.m., join me, Brandon Waltons, as we recap the biggest stories of the day and talk about why they matter to you. From the state capitol to town hall, there's no shortage of events happening. Keep up with it all. Watch and subscribe to Daily Headlines from Texas Scorecard. This was a monster. He murdered his baby. And quite frankly, we should be looking at the system that was in place that allowed him to continue seeing his daughter, getting custody of his daughter, that allowed that system to just let her into his care. That's what we should be looking at, not looking at how, how to get him off of death row. I mean, we can have a conversation. It's a totally different new conversation about the death penalty and whether or not you believe in it, about the morality of the death penalty if you're pro-life. That's fine. We can have that conversation a different time because that's not the argument that's being presented right now. Man. So now here in Texas, this child murderer gets another 90 days to live while we sort out this statewide constitutional crisis because some legislators overstepped their boundaries yet again. Governor Abbott's not happy, by the way. He's already like, yeah, y'all stepped out of line and you abused this committee and the system. You can't do that. Legislators have their place. Legislators have their role. And that role is to be respected as long as they respect it themselves. But you have to know your role and stick to it. The Texas Constitution and the United States Constitution, both give, delegate certain powers, certain roles, certain authorities to certain elected officials. So all of this can work cohesively together. You can't just manipulate the system, throw a toddler fit, because this guy ran out of appeals, because the governor didn't find it fit to delay his execution or the parole board or literally anyone else. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because he did it. Because he killed her. And he does not deserve 90 days, 20 days, one more day. And now we've got to be figuring out where to go, what to do next, and what safeguards can we put into place so that this doesn't happen again, so that this abuse of power in the Texas House doesn't happen again. So if you're wondering, if you're ever wondering, why can't we make progress in this state? We just can't get out of our own way. So we'll see what happens in this particular case, but just totally egregious things going on, all while our basic asks here in the state of Texas remain neglected. But 
We'll keep an eye on this story. I'm sure Texas Scorecard will have the latest, as always. Um, I'll keep an eye on it as well and uh, give you the latest. And we will see you next time here on Come and Take It. Come and Take It. 